everyone, James Martin here. I'm here to help you filmmakers to not only make your movies better, but also to help you succeed in your career. Today I want to talk to you about how to hold an audition. See, an audition is a very important process in the filmmaking project journey because an audition helps you take all the incredible talent that's out there and whittle it down to the very necessary actors and talent that you need for your project. What I've learned about hosting different auditions is that there's a multitude of different ways on how you can approach this and different things that you want to really keep in mind to really help you find the exact talent that you need for your project. Because the truth of the matter is, if you go out and post it, some information regarding your project, there are thousands of actors, thousands and thousands and thousands of actors, to the point where it gets very overwhelming. You know, from big actors to small actors to famous actors to not so famous actors to men, women, different ages, different voice types, different styles, accents, ethnicities, all sorts of different stuff, different personalities and different things that can really bring your project to life and your characters right off the page. So how can you do this? And what are the different types of auditions that we should be thinking about when it comes to our projects? Before we even begin the audition, the first thing that you have to put out is what's called a call for an audition. So essentially you're putting out information to let all the actors and talent know about the project that you're working on and information regarding the audition and the type of talent that you're looking for. So you wanna make sure that you're clear on what the project is about, make it very, very short and concise, just keep it something that's gonna be interesting and gives everyone a bit of a heads up what it's about. Make sure you have information that's clear regarding the character. So you wanna, but also you need to be more clear on the physique of the character. So if you're asking for a man or a woman, or it doesn't matter which gender it is, are you asking for a particular age range? Because remember, a 20 year old is not gonna act the same way as someone in their 40s, nor are they gonna act the same way as someone who's a teenager. So you need to be clear on what the age range is. So you can ask for actors that are between like 25 and 30 or 40 and 50, whichever, but make sure that is very clear. If you have anything that's unique, like an accent or a personality, then you make sure that's brought in as well. If you're looking for, let's say a French accent, you need to make sure that it's clear that this character is expected to perform a French accent. When you get into more serious talent, like I'm talking about you're getting close to the city like Toronto or some other big city where you're dealing with some very serious trained actors then you also will have to point out whether this is union or non-union what that means is if it's a non-union project then actors and talent that are well not from a union can come onto your project all right if you're looking for union actors then that opens up to the actors that are a part of a union. However, you do need to make sure that if you're gonna go down this route, that you need to make sure that you have permission from a union, that you can start bringing on unions, people on set, because unions and guilds do have very specific expectations as to how their actors are gonna be treated and what the process is. So if you're especially in the beginning phase, don't worry about unions or guilds. Just put it out there and say, we're not, we're not looking for people of a union or just simply say non-union. Then give a very simple description of what the character is about and make sure that it's clear in the sense that you need to understand what the wants are, the goals, the struggles, what makes this character unique. So that way it gives the actors an idea of what is it that you're trying to achieve, okay? Then you wanna make sure you have very clear instructions on how the audition is going to take place. So if you're doing an in-person audition, make sure you're very clear on when, where, and what to bring. Typically what you wanna do is you wanna ask everyone, regardless if it's online or offline, to bring you a resume, like an acting resume. This is gonna show all the projects they were in and their talents and their training, and a headshot. All right, a headshot lets you at least keep a photo identification of what they look like. And this is more for information for even later down the line. Like maybe an actor didn't get into this current project, but you at least have the resume and headshot for future projects. It doesn't hurt, especially if you're planning on doing multiple different projects. If it's online, be very clear on the expectations and the instructions on how the actor should be sending you their talent online. All right, make sure that you're clear on the email, how you want the video, but I mean, don't even just say, 
you know, send me a video to here. Make sure you're specific because I promise any instructions that you leave open for interpretation means that something will go wrong. So if you're asking for a t what's called a taped audition or a video recorded audition, then make sure you're clear on, okay, listen, I expect a video to be sent in to me by either Dropbox, Google Drive, or WeTransfer. Or you can say, you need to make sure that your video is uploaded to YouTube under unlisted and then send me the video link. Because if it's just open-ended, then something's gonna go wrong and you're gonna get a bunch of weird stuff. All right, you can even say, please make sure you include in one email, your video link, your resume, and your headshot. This is also gonna help you with the auditioning process before you even audition anyone. Because if you leave out very clear instructions, and someone doesn't follow your instructions, then how do you know that they're gonna follow your instructions when it comes to the project? If they don't understand how to simply send you an audition, then how do you know that they're going to properly get to the right address? How they're gonna show up on time? How they're gonna be prepared? How they're even gonna take direction? This is why this audition process is so important. Now, when it comes to the audition, you might wonder, okay, so what should the actors do? How should they prepare for the audition? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna provide what's called audition sides. Sides are essentially a very small script that the actor is going to memorize and then perform, whether it's on camera or in person. Typically, these sides are either just a bunch of made up dialogue that has to do with the character. So this doesn't have to even come straight from a script itself. It could just be something extra. I've done that. It could be an excerpt from another movie just to show you some similar responses and performances. You could also take a segment from your script and make that the sides too. You don't wanna make it long, maybe have it about 30 seconds to a minute. That's how long the audition should be because remember, you gotta go through a ton of these. Make it quick and as simple to the point as possible. Now you put out the audition call, all right? And you're trying to get your talent. Now you're doing your audition. So the first thing I wanna point out is there's actually two types of auditions that we're going to discuss. There's an in-person audition and then there's an online audition. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about the in-person edition. So there's kind of pros and cons to either doing it in person versus doing it online. Now, if you were to do something in person, the benefit of course is you have the talent right there in front of you in the same room. You can ask questions, you can examine their acting and their voice type and their body language and the personality they have. You can really tell a lot about, is this a person that we're gonna get along during this project or are they gonna be a total pain in the butt? Are they someone that understands direction? Is this someone that as soon as you see them, they make a very immediate impression and therefore you know they're gonna absolutely nail it on the camera. Now, of course, there are a multitude of different sort of downsides to this. Of course, one, you have to have a place to hold this audition, right? I mean, I've hosted this in all kinds of places from apartments to condos to rooms and libraries to rooms at schools to all sorts of different venues. You just need to make sure that it's a place where you have an isolated space for at least yourself and the talent. You also wanna make sure that it's a place that your talent can find with the greatest of ease. Because if you make it very confusing for your actors and talent to try and find you, then it's just gonna make your job that's already a pain an even bigger pain. Because then they're gonna get lost and get confused. Just make the process simple. Okay, if it's at one location and if there's a room, make sure that you either say to them, hey, listen, we're either in room 309 or room B in this one location, or just say, hey, I want you to wait at this location right outside and then someone will come and find you and then guide you to where the audition is being taken place. Again, just keep it very, very simple. Of course, when you rent out a piece of property, unless you're doing it at a place that you already have access to, then it's going to give you a bit of costs. So you might want to think about how to budget for renting out different rooms for however long, hours, days, hopefully it's not that long. I would suggest in the beginning phase, try and find some spaces that you can do it for free and that you have permission to do this in. Now, of course, the benefit for doing something online is you don't have to worry about that, all right? 
because it's online. All you have to do is just ask your actors or your talent to essentially record themselves either in a video format or an audio format and then send it your way. So there's no cost whatsoever. However, what you do have to understand is that you can't make immediate adjustments right then, right there, unless you're doing like a video conference. That could be another way you do your auditions. But we're gonna talk about that at a later point. When you're doing the initial auditions, by asking people to just record themselves on video and then send that to so you have all this information together, then it just saves both you and the other person a hassle and some costs. So this might be a great way for you to really do some auditions and really get your project together at no cost and no stress whatsoever. Now you also might be wondering, well, what's the difference between a video and an audio tape recording? Well, this will depend on the project that you're doing. See. If you're doing a, like a movie or a short film where we are seeing the actors, like a live action project, doing a video audition is critical because you want to see what they're doing. If it's like a voiceover type project, like if it's animated or just something of that nature, then audio is more necessary. You don't need to use a video because we don't care what happens on their face. We're not looking at the face acting. We're listening to their voice. Can their voice do the acting for them? So really, if you haven't noticed, the auditioning just comes down to what do you need? Because everything has a very specific function. And you also want to make sure that when you do an in-person audition, record everything. So either have yourself or have someone else with you to record the auditions because you want to make sure that if you see talent, especially if it's multiple different types of talent, they can always go over the talent later on and just remember what they did and how they felt. It's very hard to remember what all of them did. So it's good to at least have that recorded and documented so you can expect it later on. And this is why doing the, uh, the audio and the video acting is also incredibly important. And then just make sure that unless you have permission to use the actors callbacks and audition recordings, that are in your project, unless you have permission to use their videos and audios for like behind the scenes or anything, then that's okay. Other than that, just keep in mind, all of this is private information. You do not post this stuff online. Okay, so if an, unless an actor is signed onto the project, you don't post their headshots, you don't post their audition tapes, period. If you get auditions and resumes and stuff like that, just keep it on file, just keep it set aside in a folder, on a hard drive, and this way, this becomes information that you can tap into on future projects because you always want to do future projects. Once you're done the auditions, then what you want, essentially what you're doing is you're taking all this talent and you're breaking it down to people that you really like. You take all this talent and you want to really cut it down to the people that you really think are going to do a good job. Now, if you end up choosing one person to go ahead and play a certain character, then great. Job's done, you don't need to do any more auditioning. But what happens if you have all this talent and you have more than one person that you really think could do a great job for the role? What do you do then? Well, then the next step is what's called a callback. Callback is when you take those very specific talents, okay, and you have them come back to do another audition. Usually you wanna make sure this audition is more in-person and you get straight to the point. So often, if you're doing, let's say, either in-person or online, I would highly recommend make your callbacks in-person. Unless they're traveling far away, if they're from another country, then that's a different story. But if you can, have everything in-person. All right, and this is where just do the auditions online and then meet the actors face to face and then you work with them a little bit. You get to know them a lot more, okay? Very simple. Because the whole point is now you're really getting very critical and very more decisive as to who you want to play that specific role. Now, when it comes to your callbacks, this is where you can get even more elaborate. So for the callbacks, give them something like a big monologue. You can either give the actor like a whole scene from the project that you're working on or even write a big monologue regarding your character and make sure that you really try and make it a good scene or a monologue that can show a lot of personality about the character. If it's just one dimensional and not showing much, then that's kind of a wasted opportunity. So you want to make sure that if your character is meant to get happy and then really angry, that the, the callback itself, what they're performing, 
lets them go from being happy to really, really angry. So that way you can see that transition and you can see how everyone does. I once did an audition for singing, okay? And at first I did in-person and videotapes. I did both of them. And I basically asked everyone to perform a song that they want. It could be any song, I don't care. Just give me a song. And so they did, and then I cut it down to the people that I wanted, and so they did a callback, but then I sent them the actual song that they were going to be singing, just to hear their responses. And then from there, I was able to cut it down to the exact talent that I wanted. So it's really about getting more and more precise. And listen, you can do a numerous different callbacks and numbers of different auditions. It's about taking all this talent and cutting it down to exactly the people that you want. And honestly, you don't even have to do auditions and callbacks if you don't want to. Let's say there's an actor out there that you're dead certain that you really want to come in and play your character. What I would then recommend is just do a simple audition with them. Give them some lines regarding the character, okay? Just have them do a little bit of performance just so you can watch and see like, okay, so how are they gonna act with this current project? So now you know, and if you're still happy with them, great, bring them on. An audition is a safe way to really test out someone's talents and acting abilities and see how they're gonna to commit to a project. Maybe they are not a good fit for this particular role, but they could be a great fit for another role down the line. All right, so I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, please like this video, share it to other people that you think could really, really benefit from this advice. And make sure you subscribe because I got videos coming every single week. Tons of great value to help you really nail great videos and great movies. All right, so good luck and I will see you next time.